Hey guys, Zarek here, and today I bring you guys episode 4 of the Inform 7 tutorial. I'm actually recording this like literally 2 minutes after the previous um, episode that I recorded. And in that video I said I was going to do tables. I'm actually going to change that because I realised there was a couple other things, uh, little basic things that I didn't cover. Uh, that really help you in the game. So we're going to go over those and then leave tables to the next episode. Uh, so tables will come. That will be the next episode next week. So as you can see from where we left off. I haven't obviously changed anything. I haven't actually saved. So probably should save. Um, just control S. So we've still got the variables. Etc. Etc. Nothing's changed. What we're going to do is we're going to have a when play begins command. And also we're going to include some containers and a door. That is what we're going to do in this episode. It sounds pretty easy and it is. So let's crack into it. So when play begins, when play begins is a great command. Um, it also can be changed to when a scene begins, which we'll get into maybe a little bit later. It's pretty much the exact same thing. Um, so when play begins is text that will come up when the play begins. Um, no shit. So, what we want to do is, you can put this anywhere, I'd probably put it up the top, it makes more sense. So, when play begins, and I believe that is a colon, uh, it might not be, but we'll go and check. Um, hello, this is the YouTube Money Games, I don't know, uh, let's just type that. Um, and that theoretically, unless I've messed up, uh, which I have. Okay, let me actually go and I might scare you guys here, so don't freak out. I'm going to go onto my old code here, which you can see is huge. And just, just have a look. Okay, so we've got you say. So that was my error here. So when play begins, um, then let's go, I don't know, uh, that down, say. And then that theoretically should work. Yep. So you can see, hello, this is my YouTube money games. Easy enough. Now, another thing that you might get a bit bugged out about, about and I actually found this from Infiction, uh, the website I mentioned in the last episode, is that you've got this bit here. Now, this is obviously legal information, just letting you guys, uh, letting people know who the author is, what the release is, serial number, etc. of Inform 7. Uh, so you've got to have that there. But the thing that bugged me is that you had, you know, your... Um, when play begins and then you had this and then you had your room It kind of like broke up the game. So what you want to do is we'll go on uh, here uh, Where I've got all the code here and we want to Use this code here. So let's just copy and paste that code here and I'll explain to you guys what this code is So the display banner rule is listed before when the play begins stage rule in the startup rules now startup rules You can go and find I believe they're in the index somewhere I don't actually know, I didn't actually look, I think it might be there. Um, I didn't actually look, I'll be honest. Um, someone gave me it and I was like, okay, this works. So the display banner rule is what this is. This is the display banner. Um, so that will uh, be played, that will be listed before the when play begins will be played. So that will go before that, which then allows that to be at the top, then that. Um, sorry, that at the top, then that, then that. So as you can see, if we hit replay, it is now at the top, then the when play begins, then the bedroom. Simple. Just nice and easy code there for you guys to put in to make your game look a little bit cleaner. So that is the when play begins rule. As you can see, that took us four minutes and I had to go and find my old code. So that is pretty, pretty damn easy code. So the next thing we're going to move on to here is containers and doors. Now, I'm probably going to have to go back to my old code again because my brain is completely lost. Uh, I'm too tired and I probably should have looked at it beforehand. But I'm underprepared. I'm a coder. This is how we go. So, let's go for containers. So, the container, we want to say that something's a container. So, what I used, because uh, it doesn't really matter, is an end table. So, an end table is a type of container. Now, I am going to have to check in my code here because it is quite annoying. Uh, so I'm going to skip through a lot of it to try and find where it was. Uh, as you can see, what I mean by there's just tons and tons and tons of code. All right, so an end table is a type of container. An end table is openable. An end table can be open. An end table is usually openable and closed. So we're actually just going to copy the code. It's easy. It's 
easier. Well, you've already got the code, it's easier to copy and paste. So, an end table is a type, uh, kind of container, an end table, a words, an end table is openable, it can be open, and is usually openable and closed. So it's basically saying it's closed, but it can be opened. Simple. So that's just, you know, basically staying a variable. That's basically another type of variable there for containers. So now let's actually make a container. So let's say, I don't know, uh, wooden table is a an end table. Um, the description of wooden table is um, this is a boring oak table and you actually notice I've messed something up because I've missed out where the hell it is it says a wood, uh, wooden table is an end table doesn't say where it is so I believe I just put it afterwards yep. so let's have it as wooden table is in kitchen a scratch of the wooden table is this now if we want to have it that we've got an item in there we'll just say so a uh, knife is uh, um, is in wooden table a uh, the description of knife is Ouch, looks sharp. Simple. Now if we hit replay, as long as I haven't messed up the code, which I haven't, which is good because normally I do. Um, so we go bedroom, you could also see that a wooden table is in kitchen, exactly the same as here with the archer. So, got a wooden table. But what about if we want to open it in the actual game? Simple, you just hit open, wooden table. Pretty easy. You can see it opens the uh, wooden table, revealing knife, and you can take the knife simple and then also just hit close wooden table if you want to be a bit um, OCD so that is simple now we've got a knife now we're deadly now the police gets it to us but anyway so, so that is a container pretty easy what about a door a door is pretty pretty similar uh, again I'm gonna go and look at my code here as it's right here so the rusty front door is a door the door is locked uh, the front door is north of wherever. Uh, the description of where of a door is this. The matching key of the door is this. The player carries this key. Now, obviously, you do not need the key bit. You can just get rid of that. Uh, but then you need to get rid of the locked part. Simple. So you can just have the rusty front door as a door. It is north of, I don't know, let's say kitchen for our case. The uh, description of is this. And that will be simple. That's all you need. So... I'm just going to copy the whole code here, um, just because uh, we're going to, you know, obviously put it into our code rather than the uh, code from the thingy. So the front door is north of, uh, i got to work out, remember where we go, right? It's north of kitchen, all right? Yeah, I think. So, and when we replay again, um, I've actually, nope, it's because I've now said that two things are north of kitchen. So we have to say the bedroom is north of the door. The rusty, I just going to leave it as the rusty front door, even though it's not a front door, but let's go leave it as the front door. And it should mean that, you know, it is blocked because we haven't actually unlocked the door. So again, just like anything else, you unlock the door with key because we've only got one key and one door. That's it. Otherwise, if you had like multiple keys, you'd actually have to uh, specify what key and maybe even what door, depending. Especially if you've got like two or three doors in a room, like you're in a room trapped with four other doors around you that are all locked. Have fun. How do you get there in the first place? So now we can go south and it will allow us to go into the kitchen. Pretty easy. So that is it really, I'm going to leave this episode a little bit shorter. Um, so that is how you make doors, that's how you make um, containers. Like I said, I just call it an end table for the containers, you can call it absolutely anything. Because all you just got to say is what it is, and then it already knows what it is. Hell, you could probably even say um, a box is a container, and it will work. Simple. 
All right, you could say an, an A is a container. Actually, I don't even know if that will work. It might confuse the form a bit. So that's simple. So when play begins, say whatever. Uh, this can be also developed a little bit further if we actually go into my uh, main code here. I'm going to mine. Uh, we'll get into the chapters in a little bit. Uh, they're just a little bit of a gimmicky thing. Uh, but you can see we can change the time of day. We can change the status lines, etc. Uh, etc. Et so if, uh, if I um, start this code here, start this game, um, this is what we call the status bar. Uh, so basically, it allows you to display the time. And as you can see to the left of the status bar, we have the time and the date. Simple. And I actually use a variable for the uh, time, uh, for the date, I believe. Uh, for, yeah, for the um, day. So. That's just something for you guys to look at. So, anyway guys, this was Ark. If you guys did enjoy, leave a like down below. Subscribe if you enjoy my content. I hope you guys are enjoying the Inform 7 tutorials. And I hope you guys are learning. And yeah, peace out.